Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Amos from Symmetry Acoustics. Uh, today, let's talk about the concept of sound absorption or how sound is absorbed, the sounds behind it, because uh, a lot of guys still don't understand it, and that's why they use uh, those materials like cushion, egg shear, egg crate, uh, like zin with the buttons, and some other stuff like uh, those things that are used to package fruits. You, you know how they, they, the ones with some protrusions, uh, the plastic ones. Now, uh, this house sound is absorbed. But before we explain how sound is absorbed, let's first understand how sound is produced. Sound is produced when uh, air molecules are uh, excited or are triggered at specific frequencies based on the source of the vibration. And when they are excited or are triggered, they travel in a straight line. When they, they encounter hard surface like a floor or wall or ceiling, they are bounced off, they bounce off and they cause reflections in the room that we are very familiar with. Uh, the question is what then happens when they encounter material that is absorbent or that's a porous material. When they encounter porous materials or sound absorbent material, the vibrating air molecule then encounter resistance or friction as they pass through the porous material and uh, uh, in that process they are turned into heat uh, and that's how we get energy loss and that's how we get sound absorption. That is important because if we use wrong uh, materials that are not open, I um, mean not uh, porous, uh, then we will not be able to get uh, adequate sound absorption or sound absorption at all. Because uh, let's take for instance, uh, I decided to, uh, to use a cushion today. Cushions are available everywhere. A lot of studio guys are buying them and using them everywhere. Uh, cushions are closed cell. Closed cell mean air cannot pass through them. So when sound vibrations uh, encounter such materials, only a very tiny amount will be absorbed. And then let's talk about five kilohertz and above. So it means if you buy a cushion of five inches, and it only absorbs five kilohertz and above, uh, then it means there's no difference between uh, that cushion and a towel because towels or coat curtains absorb such frequencies. So the most problematic frequencies in studios uh, generally, we need to work and absorb frequencies below one kilohertz as much as possible, all the way to 250 hertz, because in that range is where we have uh, instrumentation and then we have a lot of vocals around that area. And if possible, it should go to uh, 100 hertz. Then below 100, then now that, that, that at that point now we talk about subbase, uh, which uh, we, we can uh, handle in a very different manner. Now we want to talk about absorp absorption material based on uh, op optimization and uh, how they differ uh, and why some absorb better than others. So when designer or manufacturers are designing products, they take two things into account, or rather I think three parameters. Uh, they take the density, and also we have porosity, and then we have uh, something like thickness. So all these uh, parameters need to work together. We need to get an optimized balance between these three so that we have a panel that is optimized at absorbing a lot of frequencies. So let's take we have a, 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 a panel of two inches and it has a flow resistivity of uh, maybe, uh, let's talk about 10,000 uh, uh, kilo pas I mean pascal per square meter, which is uh, the unit they use. And then we play around with the, the porosity and uh, also the thickness, then you can see how these parameters are linked together. And this is why uh, some panels perform better than others. So if you're a studio guy and uh, you, you want the best possible sound absorption in your studio, which a lot of you guys don't have, uh, then tend to work with the porous material. There are materials that are designed for acoustics, where, where we have things like rock wool, we have mineral wool, or we have uh, fiberglass, glass wool. These materials are exactly designed for sound absorption and thermal uh, insulation. Uh, so they do that work uh, very nicely. Also acoustic form uh, not being left, acoustic form is not the, like the ordinary, ordinary form because acoustic form, it's formulated. Uh, there's a formula of mixing it that enables it to have a very uh, superb, so, uh, I mean porosity, a vis a -vis density. So that if you find a, a, cost, a form of two inches, then it will be able to absorb much better than your average cushion of even six inches. So before you build that panel or you build that studio, I'm giving you this on from information. Uh, go for porous, uh, porous absorption material, go for rock wool, go for mineral wool. And also, uh, if your budget is so low, a caustic form uh, would be a better choice because it's much better than cushion, it's much better than lexine. Because even those lexines that have the buttons like this one I'm showing here, uh, it's a close to the material because even the material behind it is, is a cushion. So you close it the more. And then what you get is that if you enter a room with these kind of uh, panels, and you like clap your hands, then what you will hear is some, there are some ringing uh, called flutter echo or comp com filtering in more uh, technical terms. And we don't want comp filtering. So in such rooms, uh, if you play drums, for instance, you won't be able to get very clear high frequency uh, absorption. 
uh, and that is not what we want. We want as much absorption as possible uh, below one kilohertz. So with that information, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.